100 years as of yesterday. Um, 
but imagine being a, a, an accomplished botanist and then you come up to the United States, which was fairly primitive in 1913, visiting the prairies, traveling up to the Northwest, coming to California, uh, going to the Sequoia Groves in the Sierra, uh, near the woods near Mount Tamalpais. It was an exciting time for them. And if you want to look up any of the quotations, it's really quite exciting to, to see some of the speeches that they gave because they were just responding to how uh, thrilling it was to actually see the things that they've been reading about. That was a, it was a cool moment. The, the trick is, can the society survive after that? And what happened was, there were two aims for the society. One was to promote botanical research, and one was to diffuse uh, botanical knowledge. So, not that many people at the time, but uh, these two things were accomplished by basically what the botanical society does now, and what the California Native Plant Society does now. And Jepson started the Madronio in 1916, so just three years later. So there's the uh, professional side, and they also led lots of field trips. And I didn't know there was actually a bulletin named the so it's kind of cool. And that listed all their field trips that they would do, and they did tons of field trips all the time. Uh, the Native Plant Society basically does that. Uh, all those different uh, local groups keeping this kind of activity alive and diffusing mechanical knowledge to, to the rest of the general public. I always look at this and, and think how bizarre it is that uh, the journal was named Madronia, and I work with Archistathlis, a related genus, and uh, Namafla was the name of their bulletin, but of course for my PhD work I work with Felistema. <laughs> Gibson just missed it. <laughs> Okay, so after 100 years, we've had 64 different presidents, uh, you know, even though Jepson held it for a long time. Then they started cycling in one president per year until Wayne Farron came and he said, no, oh, the presidents need to be longer. So now those of us who get in here are stuck a little bit longer. That's okay. 25 different editors of 60 volumes of the Grunia. That's got to be a lot of people, many of whom are in this room, right? Many past presidents are in this room. And there's just been an incredible array of botanists who've been officers of the society. I just listed a few, but I have two pages of, of people, all of whom are in the present, and most of whom have personally influenced me, uh, either directly or, or my, uh, the, the work that I've read. Now, at 25 years, there was a uh, banquet to celebrate making 25 years. Jepson had already retired, but he was the speaker for the banquet. And he was pretty impressed the society was strong and doing well. And then at 50 years, I, don't, I couldn't find a record of a banquet celebrating 50 years, but in the back of the volume of the Madronia, there was a little bit of And I know you've already found it. And this is how they celebrated the 50th year. Now, in 1963, the society would have been pretty strong. Okay? That was a, a, a very active period for body. There were some electronic online stuff, so the journal was a very critical aspect of how the bodies could communicate with one another. Um, but it's kind of interesting that this is the celebration. We're 50 years old. Well, now it's been 50 more years. And after a hundred years, um, well, when I first showed this to my wife, I said, yeah, but we don't look like this in the field anymore. We certainly have better equipment to travel with, right? <laughs> and she looked at that and said, no, it looks pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought we were doing so much better. I'm a little bit down the line. So what is the future? Um, and the future is a thing that really changed a lot in the last hundred years, right? And in that hundred years, all of a sudden, especially more recently, there's been an explosion in technology. And that's had a huge impact on uh, the nature of our society. Uh, I have a vivid memory of being an undergraduate and it first came out with fancy calculators. And those calculators were over $200. And they could do almost anything. But I didn't have $200. That was a long time ago. That 
that's when you survive with 2,000 a year. You wonder what 10% of your annual supply. I'll wait till the price comes down. You know, I never bought a calculator. <laughs> and when the first computers came out, I started buying the first computers. In fact, I still have an Osborne. Does anybody even know what that is? <laughs> <laughs> the first portable suitcase. <laughs> up with those kinds of technological changes, the society has to really make a lot of changes. And we've been trying to do that. We've uh, modified the financial structure of the society. We're very financially, we're very healthy. So that's a really good thing. Uh, we've shifted the journal online so that if you want to submit a paper, you do it online. The reviewer happens online. And all of a sudden now, finally, we've figured out how to do this. The members can access the journal online. You can keep your membership up online. You don't have to do it by writing a check, putting it in an envelope, and thinking, where are the stamps? <laughs> <laughs> I've lost all the stamps. And now you can find the older issues. You don't have to come to the Berkeley Library any longer. You can go to Two different sources, Bio 1.2. I have no access to Bio 1.2. It's a, it's a Bio 1 collection, it's a collection of tons of journals, but my library only buys Bio 1.1. So that was kind of frustrating, but over the last few years, we've been successful and we got Jay's store to take us. And as of Thursday, there it is. Only the really old ones are free at the moment because uh, you have to have the subscription react button. It'll be there as soon as your group does it. So this is our centennial. It's an opportunity to enhance social interactions. We mostly know each other, but we don't get the chance to interact with each other very much, right? We do it by email, but it's really different to do it by this. I think that's really important. And the other thing we're doing is a 24th graduate student meeting. They started in the 1970s, and what's really cool about them is I don't have to do anything. <laughs> Graduate students do 100%, and this has been a, a really amazing one this particular time. They're over 50 times. So if you have an opportunity to stay tomorrow, that's the future of Bonnie in California. You can come and watch it. So before I quit, I want to have a special thank you to the sponsors of this Centennial because these are the people that are keep, keeping us financially secure. And we came up with uh, really crazy names for levels. The Redwood level means they gave us a lot of money. Uh, the Madrone level means they gave us a lot of money, but not as much as Redwood. See, I like them. <laughs> and that works really well with me. And that includes a, a lot of uh, public agencies as well as private groups that are all focused around the plants. And then, of course, the Manzanita level, which is the best level, <laughs> even though that's not quite as much money. But a lot of people did this. And in fact, there were so many, I had to put three slides of Manzanitas. <laughs> And I'll let you do the reading. And then we even have one more level, and I know manzanitas are shrubs, and valley oaks are gigantic, but manzanitas are better than valley oaks. <laughs> so not only are the sponsors really important because they provided money, but uh, this, this worked because a lot of people worked really hard for the last year. And I'm not even talking about the speakers who are going to be standing up and giving you really interesting talks. Actually, I'm probably one of those. But here are the people who have really worked hard, um, especially um, the people at the top of those lists. But everybody on the list has put in a huge amount of effort uh, to make this thing happen. So if you see those names, uh, shake their hand and tell them how much you appreciate the effort that they put in. Of course, if you see any of the sponsor names, 
Yeah, give them a hug as well. <laughs> so here's what's going to happen. Today we're going to be in this room all day. Now we're only going to see two talks at a time so that we can then socialize. And I designed it that way because when I go to conferences, the best part is socialize. Uh -huh. So here's two talks. You'll be stimulated. Hang out with your friends. We'll talk about it, right? That's how it's going to work. Tonight we'll have a banquet. But uh, there'll be a drinking reception before you, because we're honest. <laughs> there has to be something like that to kind of lubricate the discussions. <laughs> um, both the reception and the banquet will be at the Hotel Shack Plaza, which is right next to the bar station for downtown. For, it's really close. If you need any help getting there, let me know. And Kip Holtzinger will be the uh, speaker. And he'll be talking about looking forward to the, the next century of body in California. So I'm kind of looking forward to find out what's going to happen tonight. <laughs> Finally, tomorrow is the graduate student meeting. And three concurrent sessions. It should be really exciting. And I'm looking forward to that. So thank you and welcome to the symposium.